My name is Sherman Dilla Thomas. Most folks call me Dilla, and I'm very proudly a Chicago urban historian. So I became known as the Chicago Urban Historian primarily due to my TikTok channel. Uh, starting in 2020, when we all were stuck in the house with nothing to do, we all started using what was then a new app. And what I noticed about that app was that anytime the word Chicago was even mentioned, it was often followed by something negative. And if there was a uh, meaning or an interest in Chicago as far as it relates to something we created, it typically started and stopped with like gang culture or drill music or that sort of thing. And while those things do uh, find origin in Chicago, that's not all that we're known for. and That's not all we've given the world. And so I created a TikTok channel to primarily teach my children the awesomeness that comes from the city that they were born and raised in. And what I discovered is that there was an appetite for that. And so uh, incrementally, my channel started to gain popularity. And that encouraged me to tell more Chicago stories. And so now I use my social media platform to highlight the things that originate from Chicago, not just the problems, but the solutions to those problems. Uh, I also teach Chicagoans the origin stories of some of the names of the neighborhoods that they live in, the name of the schools that you attend. I talk about uh, not just the science that comes from Chicago, but mainly the black science and scientists that find their origins in our city. So I would say that that's how I became known as the urban historian. Leading out of the social media content, what was a common theme with people in my comments would be, is that building still standing? Maybe I'd be telling the story of how Carter G. Woodson invented Black History Month at the Wabash YMCA. And in the comments, somebody would say, is that building still around? Maybe I'd be talking about how uh, a trumpet player from New Orleans moved to what we call Bronzeville and he married a lady by the name of Leo Hardin and she taught him to play classical music. And that individual became known as Louis Armstrong and sometimes I tell those stories in front of their homes and people would want to know where that is. And so I decided to create a tour company where we could take people throughout the south and west side of Chicago to highlight some of the amazing things that come from Chicago and visit some of the landmarks that can be found. So I invented uh, Chicago Mahogany Tours. Uh, we lead neighborhood tours over to the public every weekend. We mainly depart from the DuSable Museum of Black History and we take you around Chicago. Sometimes we go to Bridgeport, we check out the Chicago Union Stockyard. Sometimes we go to Roseland, check out Old Fashioned Donuts, we take you by Palmer Park or what was formerly known as Mendel Catholic School, it's today is Gwendolyn Brooks College Prep. Sometimes we go to North Lawndale and we follow the footsteps of Dr. King during his fair housing campaign, which took place in 65 and 66. Sometimes we make our way to what I call the Ellis Island of Chicago. We go to Uptown, uh, which is one of the most integrated neighborhoods in Chicago. And we take you to the Green Mill. We take you to some of the theaters, the Oregon that's on Broadway, Broadway Street. Uh, so some of the, those are some of the things you can find by taking a Chicago Mahogany tour. Um, trying to figure out what's my favorite Chicago story to tell is often like asking what's my favorite breath of oxygen. It's really hard to figure that out some days. Since we're in Black History Month, I love telling the story of how a Jewish dude from Springfield, Illinois donated money to create uh, the first YMCA in this country that allowed African Americans to use this full services. And in that building, a grad student created what was then known as Negro Achievement Week. Uh, today we call Negro Achievement Week Black History Month. Uh, sometimes when I'm feeling edgy, I like to tell the story of John Hertz. Today we know John Hertz from the Hertz Rental Car Company, but he also created Yellow Cab. And when we originally had Yellow Cabs here in Chicago, they got into a beef with the Checker Cab Company of Oak Park. And for 10 years, if a yellow cab guy saw a checker cab guy in the 1920s, they would shoot each other's cars up. It's known as the taxi cab wars here in Chicago, and it lasted over a decade. John Hertz got ran out of town, and so he started a new company. We call that company Hertz Rental Car. Um, if it's kids around, I might talk about how Walt Disney 
a student at McKinley Park went to a Lane Tech high school game. He saw Lane Tech's only black player, Fritz Pollard, who's the first black man to be an NFL coach. And the way that Fritz Pollard moved around the field inspired him to draw that football game, the, which is one of the first feature films of Disney when uh, Mickey Mouse is playing football. That, that origin found itself in him witnessing uh, Fritz Pollard run all over uh, McKinley High School. Um, you know, sometimes I like telling the story of how in the Mars factory on Oak Park Boulevard, a gentleman tripped and peanuts fell into the chocolate vat. And he didn't want to lose his job, so he let the bar print out and they tasted it, they loved it, and now we call that the Snickers. So there are, you know, it just depends. Uh, so I started my uh, TikTok channel primarily to connect with my then eight-year-old uh, who was learning more about social media and she was we all kind of look at social media as reality and it can be a part of reality but what one needs to know is before somebody posts something on social media they probably rehearsed it 10 times they probably erased 30 of the examples before they posted the one that they're proud of and so my daughter inspiring to be a content creator but also a very proud Chicagoan uh, was one, feeling ashamed of her city because she thought nothing good came from Chicago and two, she thought she didn't have what it takes to be a content creator because she wasn't perfect. And I started my channel to show her the opposite of that, that you don't have to be perfect, you just have to be brave and you have to be willing to start. And the more you do a thing, the better you're going to get at that thing. And then also I wanted her to, uh, to show her that you can use social media for good. And that good can be to uplift the city and, and uplift those individuals who live in the city to be proud of the city that they're from. Uh, so some of my favorite things to do in Chicago, simply to explore the city. There's about 8,000 blocks here in Chicago and most of us will never really leave that one mile radius of where we live and where we work. Uh, so I like finding new neighborhoods and picking small businesses in those neighborhoods to frequent. Uh, when I'm with my children in the summertime, I like taking bike rides down the boulevards. Chicago has a boulevard system that connects itself. So you can be on Garfield Boulevard and via the boulevard system end up on Independence Boulevard on the west side all by just taking the boulevard system. I like riding bikes doing that. Uh, of course, uh, I'm a big fan of Navy Pier and taking the kids down there to ride the Ferris wheel in the summertime. Uh, of course, like every other Chicagoan, I like going to 31st Street Beach on a good Friday night in the summer, and hearing live music and being close to the water. Uh, I'm a sports fan, so uh, I've recently discovered that I like hockey. It's the, like, I don't know if I like it on TV, but you go to a hockey match and it is a great time live, so I enjoy going to sporting events here in Chicago. Uh, but my absolute favorite thing is to go to libraries here in the city. I'm a big book nerd and uh, you can go to any library across Chicago and request a book from any library that's in Chicago. They'll ship it to that library in a number of days and you don't even have to leave your own home branch to check out the full collection of the Chicago Public Library. For anyone who's interested in becoming a content creator, no matter the type of content that you're going to produce, right, if you're going to uh, sing online, if you're going to be an interviewer, if you're going to be a historian, if you're going to be a fashion blogger, uh, if you're going to, it's a beautiful page I love called Black People Outside where they go and show black people in nature, right? Black folks do canoe and rock, climb mountains and rock climb and that kind of stuff. Uh, one, uh, intentionality is key. Right? Are you getting on social media to promote a thing you love or are you getting on social media because you want to be famous? If it's the latter, you're going to be very frustrated because you don't get to often pick what goes viral and what does not go viral. That's a thing that sometimes happens uh, organically. And if that does not happen for you, then that's going to lead to frustration and then you're not going to be able to properly do the thing you want to do. But more so focus on like doing the thing you love. Um, one of the things that helped me continue is I had poured my heart and soul in like making a history video. Uh, I can't recall which one it was, but I, I spent like four days doing the research and editing and all these things. I put the video out 
and it got about 900 views. So I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna keep working all day for 900 views. And my wife said, what happened if 900 people came over to our house and they heard you tell this story and they all clapped? I was like, well, we need a bigger house because we can't fit 900 people in this living room. But it gave me the, the wherewithal to continue to understand that if all I ever talked to was 900 people and I made a difference in 900 people's lives or I made 900 people feel better about Chicago, then that's, that's plenty viral, right? Because if we attack something 900 people at a time, you, you're doing very well. Uh, the other thing is something that my father told me that uh, I never forgot. He said, he said, focus on more about what you want to do and less about what you want to be. Because sometimes in life, something will get in the way to prevent you from being that thing. So if you want to help people, there's a number of ways that you want to help people. But if you want to be a doctor, so many things got to like fall in your way. You got to get into med school, you got to test well, you got to be able to afford med school. And so you may not end up becoming a doctor. And that's okay, because if you want to help people, there's still a number of ways that you can help people. So uh, I would say focus on why you're wanting to put the thing on social media more so than what social media can do for you. And if you work extremely hard, you're um, very consistent, and you got good intentions, then what's for you is going to be for you no matter what, right? There, um, I, before I had videos that had a million views, people were reaching out to me to come speak at their schools and take people on tours, right? And it, it, it all kind of flowed very organically. Uh, but you got to be patient. Where would I want to be five years from now, ten years from now? It's such a the hard thing for me to answer. I'm going to do my best not to cry. Uh, before I started doing TikToks, I had a pretty decent job at ComEd. Uh, I could afford to pay for Disney once every four years. I could buy a pair of Jordans every couple months without hearing my wife's mouth about it. Um, my kids never went home hungry. So I, I had really reached, that's where my username comes from, right? Six Figure Dilla. Uh, I was an area operator for ComEd making $57 an hour. If you throw that in a calculator, it means I was making six figures in my uh, you can check the stats, less than 20% of all black men in this country will ever make uh, six figures. And so uh, to have a wife that I love and a family that I love and a pit bull that I love and a bungalow that I love, right, and a couple pair of Jordans that I love, I would already reached a mountaintop. So if nothing else happens and all I'm doing in five years is doing tours and making content and hanging with my family, then uh, I'm going to die a happy man. I do have aspirations. Uh, I would like to kind of tell Chicago stories on a, on a larger platform, right, you know, the, via, the, uh, you know, movies or scripted television series, and uh, I'm starting to make inroads in that way as well. Um, but if my story ends that, you know, I kicked the bucket in 97 and all I did was live in Chicago and tell stories and take people on tours and lift up my city, I would call that a life very well lived. Uh, my hero in this city is a gentleman by the name of Tamil Black. Uh, Tamil Black lived to be uh, 102 years old. He was a Chicago historian. Um, he was an educator for 40 or 50 years. The man never not lived in Bronzeville. The man never owned a car. Yet I personally know 100% he died a very happy man uh, with his uh, widow Zenobia by his side. And uh, if that's the way I go out, then you know I'd be thrilled. Wow, thank you. That's what this is. Oh, okay. Oh, am I very much? Very, very much. I was uh, 
They had just did the unveil the unveiling of John H. Johnson's sculpture down in Arkansas, in his hometown. So then I called his I was I called him and his wife the Crown Prince and Princess of Black Publishing. And his daughter on my Instagram corrected me. She said John Johnson is the Crown Prince of Black Publisher, but Miss Hartman is the Crown Princess of oh, Black yeah. Publisher. <laughs>